and we run into people all the time. But we're too busy getting here and there. I don't know. I'm sure some of us pass somebody that needs some help, but we need to get this meeting tonight. And we said, well, somebody else can help. But God is anxiously wanting to use us as His source of grace and help to people in need. So, as we go into this toward Christmas, into a new year, we start a new uh, group of leaders here. You know, let's be listening for God. Let's be taking time to seek God's wisdom so that we can be better at making decisions for our community that helps everybody, not just one particular person on part of the economic scale, but from everybody from the lowest to the highest, that we can make a place where Summerfield will be a place where their lives can be enriched and they can grow and therefore our community can do the same. So that's right. God, we pray for an opportunity and the willingness to slow down, to hear your voice, to direct us in what we need to do and say and how we need to run this community. We just want to slow down so we can see the people around us that are in need and that we can use some of the resources we've saved by spending less to help them. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Um, thank you very much. Um, the places of worship are such an important part of the community. As mayor, it's been my pleasure and my honor to invite very all the different ministers um, to come in and assist with the invocation so that we have an opportunity to learn more about all the churches. I do have one. Go Sunday, ahead. we have our cantata, and then we're <coughs> serving brunch to everybody that comes, free of charge. So. And what time is what time's the service? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. One service. Brunch is following. And everyone is welcome. Yep. Well, that was very nice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, could we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bob Whitaker, town manager. Dean Hall, finance officer. Bob Porter, town attorney. Chris York, town planner. And I'd like to introduce our new, uh, new town attorney, uh, Robert Porter from uh, Chapel Hill. Thank you. And your son will be an alternate. Yes. Be Welcome. Thank you. Um, we have a motion to approve the agenda and the open session uh, minutes from November 12th. The only thing I have is just to remind you that our uh, Christmas holidays are the week of uh, December the 23rd. And then, of course, uh, town hall is closed on New Year's Day. Right, so uh, town hall is closed at Christmas week. Right? Yes, the week yeah. of the 23rd. Right, the week of Christmas. Okay. Um, a couple of announcements. Um, I had sent some information out about the senior lunch. Uh, I think the information has been updated on the website, which will be helpful. Um, but the Summerfield, working with the uh, Guilford Senior Resources, um, he has two free lunches for seniors if you're over the age of 55. Uh, the second Tuesday of each month at Center United at this church, where we're down, down here is. And then the third Thursday of each month at Peace United um, Methodist Church. Except the next Thursday, December 19th, it will be held at the Baptist Church. But I have some information if you need to know who to call. Um, so, so you can call the week before to let them know you're coming. But it's the town takes care of the uh, very much expenses, and I think it's a nice, it's a nice thing that we can do with these seniors. Um, and the other, the other thing I want to share with you, um, there's a Dewey store temporarily on 
220 next to um, Mama Gina's, and that is a fundraiser. They're selling all the wonderful Dewey's uh, Christmas uh, gifts and things that we can enjoy for ourselves, too. Then that is a fundraiser, too, uh, to help the different programs within the community. And the Backpack Ministry, where they provide um, food for the families, especially during Christmas. There's about 10 places throughout the community. If you see a place where they're collecting food, um, that's going to go on going until um, through the weekend, through next weekend. So it's an opportunity to be involved in the holidays. Uh, should we start with our Summerfield Fire District? I'm sorry, did anyone else have any other um, announcements? I didn't think so. <laughs> Hello. Um, in the month of November, the Summerfield Fire District ran 31 fire-related calls, 60 EMS-related calls, and 19 other calls. So our call total for November was 110 incidents. We installed 13 child safety seats. Um, also want to remind everyone that this Sunday the 15th, Sam will be at the fire station um, from 2 to 4 p.m. And if you get there early enough, right around 2, they'll be uh, coming in a fire truck. Um, and then also for our message tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit. Uh, we saw where um, some information been posted about new construction versus old construction. Uh, we just wanted to address how that pertains to us and the fire department. Um, fire potential exists in any home, regardless of old versus new construction, and is dependent on many factors including age of the home, housekeeping, weather, or even human error. However, if a fire does start in a new construction home, it creates the perfect storm. Fires in modern homes are more dangerous due to lightweight building materials, engineered wooden I-beams, gusset plates, and open floor plans, all in addition to modern furnishings that burn hotter and faster, leaving less time for occupants to escape and for firefighters to stop the flames. About 30 years ago, you had about 17 minutes to escape a fire, but today, with new construction, just three or four minutes. The last time we had a significant house fire in Summerfield was last year when a home on Lake Rent Road caught fire. Thankfully, there were no injuries. That fire took the cooperation of departments from three different counties to provide continuous flow of water. We're very fortunate that we do not have many significant fires in Summerfield. We credit some of that to our robust fire prevention program. However, for us to base history of fire occurrence and severity on the future safety of our citizens is irresponsible. Just because we haven't had a big fire lately doesn't mean that it will not happen. We want to be prepared when it does. Looking towards the future and the ways we can improve fire protection in Summerfield is proactive and good for our citizens and their safety. Thank you, Chief. Um, excuse me. Excuse me, I'll recognize my mistake. Your argument address. No, I have no I think it's a Would you like to repeat the question? I listen here. I heard your question. And so I'm at, my um, response is if anyone else said anything. Thank you. Merry Christmas. How about the Sheriff's Department? Good evening, Mayor, County Council, citizens of York County here in District 1. I'm Lieutenant Jeremy Fuller of the District 1 substation here in Summerfield. I want to report tonight that uh, in the month of November we had 131 calls uh, for service and out of those uh, 131 calls we had one reported uh, burglary and two thefts of property in which all three of the cases are being actively investigated at this time. Uh, our District 1 commercial break will be this. It is the holiday season and uh, porch pirates are on the rise. So as you have your packages delivered to your home, please make arrangements to have them secured if you're going to be out and about. I try to get them out of the front door as quick as possible. Um, we, uh, around the country, have seen an increase with that because a lot of folks are buying online now versus going in the store. And the other thing that I want to encourage our residents to do is to report suspicious activity. Uh, I always tell folks if the little hairs on the back of your neck stick up, pay attention to that and then give us a call so we can come out and uh, investigate. I do want to wish the town a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year uh, on behalf of the Sheriff's Office. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chief, committee reports? Finance. Uh, the Finance Committee. Finance Officer, Finance Committee will meet uh, Monday night to discuss the audit. Uh, 
Um, and thank you very much for the fiscal um, report. That would be helpful for planning the budgets uh, in the future, too. Um, historical. Good evening. Summerfield Historical Committee meeting of November 21st. Our guests were Charlie Rodenbow and Louise Walker. For a moment in history, Charlie Rodenbow provided an informative talk about the importance of the baggage road as a strategic road and a real part of the revolution's battle plan. He offered interesting background information on General Green's race with Dan and his unconventional approach in splitting off his baggage train from his fighting forces and sending them under General Daniel Morgan toward Roanoke while he crossed the Dan and outmaneuvered General Cornwallis. Some portion of the old baggage road still remains in Summerfield. It would be a most worthwhile future state uh, marker project as well as potentially be part uh, take a part in the uh, possible Martin House Museum. Charlie's talk gave us all a lot to think about and leads to other interesting ideas for projects. Charlie has a remarkable talent for offering very colorful descriptions of history. Under old business, Martin House, uh, Bruce Peterson and I will be meeting with Scott Whitaker to discuss ideas on how to best proceed with the project to evaluate alternatives for utilizing the Martin House. Charlie Rodenbose expressed an interest in this uh, project, as well as many members of our committee. As the town uh, owns the property, uh, 501c3 could possibly be utilized in a uh, public-private uh, partnership. There's also discussion of people to help us understand the process, <coughs> such as Doug Nodine, in Oak Ridge, and Bill Moore, former director of the Greensboro Historical Museum. Gordon Building Tour, we're going to plan a mini tour of the Gordon Building <coughs> in the near future. And field trip, we will tour the Katie Hoskins historic markers off of Cannery Road and the quote soldiers' graves in the Ridgewood <coughs> subdivision in January or February 2020. Our next meeting is scheduled for December 19th. 6.30 in Summerfield Town Hall. Um, Reese, any comments? Having I, visited? I appreciate you being so welcome. I, I learned a lot and enjoyed the talk we had. I'd love to come back. Great. Well, folks are welcome at any time. We appreciate it. Meet the Reese. I will continue. I will continue to ask because you're having wonderful history programs. And I just wish the town could do more to let people know in advance about the history programs, maybe on your website, you know, in that top building on the right hand column or something. Okay. Because you've had a wonderful history Thank programs. Thank you. Thank you. Um, historical. Sorry, trails and open space. This is starting. Trails and open space. We continue to work on the trails and open space uh, through the town trying to um, hopefully develop some sort of system so that we can, as time goes along, develop a trail system. I asked Scott, and I got noticed that he did, to send out a um, information that I got on, a, um, I believe it was the state of Wisconsin, and how much trails have added to their, what an economic benefit it is um, in that state. And um, hopefully that's what we're moving towards in Guilford County is that people really appreciate the need for trails and open space. And um, we can continue to uh, work towards that. Um, our next meeting is next Wednesday night, which I believe is the 18th at 6 o'clock. And everybody's welcome. We would like to come. Thank you. And Founders Day already. Founders Day already. Uh, the planning is underway and the biggest thing for the public to know about is uh, we still have slots uh, for on this committee. Uh, if you're interested, if you're a Summerfield resident, you're interested in volunteering for that, uh, just uh, get in touch with us. There's an application on the website or you can call us at Town Hall and we'll get you started on the process. Okay. And, um, Next 
like to uh, anything else? Uh, we, we've received our committee and uh, reports from the minutes and the various committees. Thank you very much. We get that after action report um, from Cheryl Ford. That she's done such a great job with a lot of activities and then financial report. Anything to comment about, uh, about that? Any comments? <coughs> I'd uh, like to introduce Mr. Craig Hopkins, our uh, town auditor, and uh, this is where we, the annual meeting, where we receive the audit for the fiscal year that ended June 30th, 2019. Uh, good evening. Uh, again, I'm Craig Hopkins with Gibson and Company, and uh, this is the formal audit, the independent audit for town of Summerfield, June 30th, uh, 2019. And I'd like to give uh, a brief walk through the financial studies that, uh, that you have. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, just to say, we kind of flip through the financials. And I page one is the independent auditor's report. And this is where we give our opinion on the financial statements and the numbers uh, that are given to us. And <clears throat> on page one, I'd like to say that we did all that the financial statements for the town of Summerfield at June 30th, 2019. And then on the next page, page two, is where we give our opinion. And that states, uh, in our opinion, based on the audit, uh, the financial statements refer to present fairly non material respects to the financial position of the town of Summerfield at June 30th, 2019. And that is the clean opinion, uh, our unqualified opinion. And as I always like to say, it's uh, all the I's are dotted and all the T's are all right. Uh, the next section uh, is the management discussion analysis, and it's kind of a uh, summary discussion of the finances of the town of Summerfield. Uh, and but I'd like to just go ahead and move on to the financial statements themselves. And that would begin on page 14. <clears throat> and this is the government wide presentation that we present. Uh, capital assets as well as uh, some of the debt of the town. And, uh, and that's Exhibit 1 and Exhibit 2. But uh, I'd like to again move on to Exhibit uh, 3, which is on page 16. And this is the budgetary basis of the county. And just like to go over a few of the numbers here. Uh, cash uh, was almost uh, $7 million per year again. Uh, it's down by $36,000 per year. Uh, and overall, total assets were down about 22,000 from the prior year. And their total assets were a little bit over $7 million. Uh, we had liabilities, uh, accounts payable about $123,000. And then uh, probably the most important <coughs> section is the fund balance section. And your unsigned, the town's unsigned fund balance at year end was uh, $6.4 million. And that's very good. Yeah. Uh, and then <clears throat> going to the next page, the revenue and expenditure page is on 18. And your total revenues were uh, 